right, here we go. And good morning, everybody. Uh, and welcome to our Power Up on this fine, beautiful morning. A little foggy out there in town. It might be clearing up now. Um, it was a little foggy earlier. Uh, but it's good inside, and so we'll take that. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, today is uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, July the 18th. Uh, and we're ready to jump into 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 in just a minute. Here we'll give everybody a chance uh, to get on what to say. Thank you for your prayers for our young people. We got them delivered uh, down to camp just fine uh, and excited for them to be able to, to be at camp. I uh, want to encourage you to be in prayer for them uh, as they are away. Pray that God would work in their hearts and uh, in their lives and that they would uh, grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. And we miss them, but uh, we're glad that they're able to be away. I've got, I have got one child at the house this week. And so that's a little unique to, to my situation. Uh, and uh, thankful for Camp Kobiak and the opportunity the kids have to be out there. All right, here we go. Hit that share button real quick. Uh, and let's look at 1 Corinthians at chapter number 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. As you're turning there, let, let me remind you, don't forget tomorrow night, we're going to continue our summer series. Tomorrow night, we're looking at the sanctity of life. Uh, and I'm excited for that, uh, for that study and would encourage you uh, to be here uh, this coming Wednesday, tomorrow at 6 o'clock as we look at the sanctity of life. Of life. We were looking at this summer different issues in our culture, the significance of them, how to handle them, what does the Bible have to say about them, uh, and this week it is the sanctity of life, and I'm excited about it. Okay, here we go, 1 Corinthians 14, let's look at verse, oh, excuse me, verse number 11, all right, here we go, verse number 11, therefore, uh, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be Unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Once again, we know the uh, speaking in tongues and uh, the significance, what it means, all of that, and then uh, what it means for the church, and then even today. Uh, and uh, Paul's going to explain this just a little bit more in regards to tongues here. But he has stated here to mention the gifts, the significance of the gifts of the church, the significance of love, uh, having uh, uh, our lives rooted in love and using those gifts in love, uh, but some of the gifts are, are no longer in existence as well, one of those being the gift of tongues as we, we have read and will continue to read, uh, but we note that there were people that did speak in tongues back in the early church as a sign, and Paul is saying, hey, speaking in tongues uh, serves has a purpose, but if you cannot understand it, what is the importance of it? Okay, and then as we communicate to people, are we communicating in such a way that people can understand? And Paul says, "Hey, therefore I know not the meaning of the voice. I shall be known to him that speaketh a barbarian. Okay, and an unknown tongue he speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me." Verse number twelve. Even so ye, for as much as ye are, are zealous. I don't know why, man. Goodness, the last, what, week or so? Two weeks? Been yawning a lot. Maybe 43 is hitting me harder than I thought. Uh, but, man, I apologize for the yawning. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. And that's what these spiritual gifts are for. They're for the edifying of the church. And Paul, speaking the tongues, as we have mentioned, is it edifying if you can't understand it? That's the question he's posing. Verse number 13, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. So praying in an unknown tongue, remember God, God knows our heart, God knows what we're thinking and what we would be praying. Uh, and he says, but... My understanding is unfruitful, the understanding of the unknown tongue, the understanding of speaking of tongues. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, I will sing with the understanding of also, okay? Uh, and 
saying, hey, speaking the uh, speaking gibberish, speaking an unknown tongue, it doesn't profit me. Uh, so I'm going to, he says, I'm going to pray uh, in my normal tongue, my native tongue. I'm going to sing in my native tongue. That way I may understand it also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room with the unlearned say amen? <coughs> At thy giving of thanks, see, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. sayest okay? Uh, and uh, just a quick uh, thought for you. Why do we say amen? Uh, saying amen is simply we agree uh, with what is being said, what is being sung. Uh, and it has been maybe, maybe it's been a blessing to us. So we say amen. Uh, and we're just kind of agreeing with the truth that is presented. Uh, and so don't be afraid. Listen, don't be afraid to say amen in church, okay? Uh, uh, amen uh, is say, hey, I agree. Uh, it's encouraging to whoever's up front speaking uh, and also to those that may be singing. Sometimes at the end of a song, we say amen. Sometimes uh, uh, clapping is appropriate. I don't have a problem with clapping. Uh, and uh, I think it kind of serves the same purpose. We're not in church. I, I, I don't believe that we would clap uh, maybe to <coughs> wouldn't clap to lift people up. But but clapping uh, might be a way of saying thank you. Uh, clapping would be a, a way of agreeing. Play, uh, clapping would would say uh, just to those who might be singing. Hey, great job. Uh, and we are where to give honor to honor is due. Uh, I'm not saying we clap for everything, but I don't think clapping is necessarily a bad thing. Can it become, become a bad thing? Sure it can, because we do not seek the applause of men, but uh, that's not why we do it. But, you know, if the Lord moves you to clap uh, uh, because somebody has sung a, a song uh, to the Lord and uh, uh, they have done a, a wonderful job and they've used their talent, why not clap? I mean, it's okay. We don't want to be distraction, be distracting. And then even amening. Uh, listen, don't be afraid to amen. That's an encouragement to the to the person or people up front. Uh, and you're just saying, hey, I'm engaged and I agree with what you've read. I agree with, with what you've said. I agree with what you've sung. And uh, don't be afraid to amen. I, I, I enjoy hearing the amens. Uh, and uh, you know what? It just it lets me know that people are engaged, uh, and it lets me know that people are, man, they're they're listening to the word of God. And so don't be afraid. Hey, those amens, uh, I like to hear them. Not 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 for me, but just to know that you are engaged and paying attention. All right, verse number seventeen. For thou verily give us thanks well, but the others, but the other is not edified. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than ye all, okay? And he's speaking of the spiritual gift. And what has he said about the speaking in tongues? Man, if I don't understand it, uh, when I pray, I don't understand what I say, what's the point of it? If people don't understand it, what's the point of it? And he says, man, I, I do it more than ye all. And then verse number 19, ready? Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue, okay? Once again, communicating, uh, using uh, the language that God has given to us. And um, one thing we've got to be careful of, people that might speak in tongues, that, you know, the, the gibberish, there's the holy laughter, there's the people that, that, that bark, you know, whatever, crazy stuff. Uh, and it's it's interesting those people they get a word from the Lord that only they can understand, uh, and so be be aware of those individuals of those ministries, and I would say stay away from them. Paul Paul is really distancing himself from tongues here, and saying, "Listen, I've spoken in tongues and I've done it more than anybody." But he says, I would rather speak five words that I understand and that God's people understand than to speak 10,000 words that nobody understands. Uh, and so, so that's something for us to, to consider and think about just our communication with people. Is it, is it appropriate? And you know what? We really see Paul's heart in this. Paul here, what is, what is his purpose in, in addressing this issue? 
It's others. It's to minister to others. And Paul said, hey, it's not about me and hey, I'm speaking in tongues. It's not about that. It's man, I want to be able to communicate God's love, God's message, so that people can understand it. And I hope that that's what you want to do as well. And you know, let me just kind of uh, just give a, a couple of uh, thoughts here, okay? Um, communicating God's word with people so they can understand it. Um, <clears throat> not everybody, and you know this, will, will enter into the church house. And so we need to be out in the community, out with our families, ministering the gospel. And, and we do that several different ways. And we have several different unique opportunities here. We were on a parade a couple weeks ago. We gave the gospel out. And on the back of the gospel track is, is a very clear, uh, easily understandable presentation of God's word. In a couple of weeks, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, have, uh, we're going to be involved in a parade. Uh, and then... Uh, we're going to have a car wash. Our young people are going to have a car wash. Hey, I would encourage the whole church family to get involved in it. Uh, but we're going to have a car wash. And what's the, what's the point of it? To wash cars? Okay, that's that's something that we do. The uh, point of it, so our young people can, can work, learn how to work, complete a task. Sure, those are, all, those are great life lessons. But what, what is another option, another reason, the most important reason? It is to, to get our community, to invite our community, to come onto our property and have the car wash so that we can give them the gospel. And that's the reason for it. Uh, we're going to have a yard sale. Uh, the Labor Day weekend, uh, we'll have that yard sale. Why? Uh, so that we can get the gospel. Uh, do we need a yard sale? No. They're a lot of work. It's a lot of work rounding up all your stuff, getting it here, selling a few things, and taking the rest back. That's a lot of work. So why do we do it? We put on a good we put on a good garage sale, good yard sale, so that people will come in and we can give them the good news of the gospel. That is where it's at. That's what's important. Why do we trunk or treat? Why do we do that? Because kids need candy. No. Because we're bored and, and need something to do. No. We do that to present the gospel. Uh, why, why have our choir put on and practice for hours and hours for a for a Christmas cantata? So that people who may come to church during the Christmas season can be presented with the reason for the season. Hey, why do we Why do we have maybe an Easter egg hunt and and the choir uh, do an Easter deal? Why do we have fellowships at the church? Why do we have special days? to give opportunity for you to invite somebody so that we can present the gospel. It's not to make us look good. It's to make him look good and present Jesus' love to mankind. And so that's the reason why we do what we do. And Paul here says, you know what? I spoke in tongues more than anybody. It's not about speaking in tongues. It's about others. It's about giving them the gospel. Let's be faithful at that. Okay, uh, let's welcome those who have commented this morning uh, on the live stream. Be sure and hit that share button if you have not already done so. And let's welcome those who have commented live. <coughs> Ingrid, good morning to you. Love you and have a great day. Dennis and Geraldine, good morning to you both. I hope you guys have an awesome day. David, good morning to you as well. Uh, Paula, good morning. Hope you have a, have a great day. Jean, good morning to you. Have a wonderful day. Cliff and Karen, thank you for being on this morning. You have a great day. Uh, Brian and Cindy, good morning to you as well. And hope you guys have an awesome day. All right, we'll touch base again tomorrow. Be in prayer for young people at camp. Don't forget uh, our continued Bible study tonight. Or not tonight. Wow, our continued Bible study Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Have a great day, everybody.